Hi guys, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Recently I've been doing some videos called Playing the Worst Tanks, and I did Playing the Worst Tanks in Tier 6, where I did lights all the way through to TDs, and followed yesterday by Playing the Worst Tanks in Tier 7. Doing one whole video on the worst tanks wasn't really useful. So what I've decided to do is, I still played the worst tanks, and I'm going to break them down because a couple of reasons. Firstly, there's obviously a problem out there with these tanks in these tiers. And when we start getting to tier eight, there are some beautiful tanks that really have terrible win rates. And they are, for all intents and purposes, the worst tank in the tier. Now on that, it's not my opinion. And now a lot of people have already sent me comments saying, oh, how can you say this is the worst tank? You know, I love this tank. It's not my opinion. The data that I'm using to play these worst tanks, to, to categorize them as worst tanks, is actually the data listed in Blitzstars. Not what I think, what Blitzstars thinks. With regard to this video, this is more like a masterclass on how to play the RU251. This is not aimed at your pro players. They already know how to play this tank. And this is not aimed at your immediate, in, you know, just rolling in first battle player who's got, I don't know, 500, 600 battles. This is aimed at that more serious player who is in the intermediate, probably on about, I don't know, 10,000 plus battles, 45 to 50% win rate. It's just struggling to get to that next level. And that's what this video is aiming for. It's aiming to those players to help you improve and obviously, and hopefully give you a few hints and tips on how to play such tanks like the RU251 a little bit more effectively. Now look, I'm not going to guarantee that your win rate will go up. I'm not going to guarantee you that you're going to win more battles. I'm going to actually say that if you start playing it a little bit differently, you start looking at what I'm saying, then maybe you as a player will start to improve. Look, to win battles in Blitz depends on a lot of things. Firstly, it depends on you, the player. It depends on you wanting to improve, wanting to learn. And it's not just about learning side scraping and stuff like that. Yeah, that's good stuff. But you need to learn the maps. You need to learn where to go on those maps. You then need to learn about your tank. What is its parameters? What are, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Where can I utilize this tank on a map to enhance the strengths and make the most out of it? That takes knowledge and experience, okay? And you've got to be prepared as a player to stick in that extra effort to improve your overall gameplay. The only way you're going to improve is by increasing your knowledge and awareness of the game around you and not just rush out there and try to do massive damage. That's the next part. Stop aiming for ace masteries and massive damage every game. Okay? If that's your goal, fair play to you, lovely. You know, just roll out and try and get your aces and massive damage. If your aim is to get better at the game, those aces and that massive damage are a bonus. They will come and they will come later. Refine your skills first. Start winning more games. Doesn't matter if you do 500 damage or 5,000 damage if you win the game. Doesn't matter if you do 500 damage or 5,000 damage if you do the role that you're assigned to do and you help your team win the game. So forget all this, I need big damage. I need massive win rate. Look. The guys who aim for that are generally the best players in the game and they're generally the pros. They already know how to farm damage and do all that sort of stuff. If you're an average player, get all this nonsense out of your head. It will come. The aces will come. The big damage games will come. Focus on your gameplay first. Focus on the maps. Focus on how to play the tank. Those other things come naturally with time. Do yourself a favor aim slightly lower don't aim for the top when what's achievable is right in front of you and that is winning more games the other thing you need to remember is it's a very team dependent game okay and if you're rolling out to increase your win rate and your stats then you have to roll out in random regular battles you will get good teams you will get bad teams and you'll get you know average teams you as a player have got to learn how to cope when you doubt a bad team, okay? Don't give up. 
do yourself a favor and try to do the best that you can do. Your team may collapse around you. It may be a loss within the first 30 seconds. You may see that. Don't let it get to you guys, okay? In most of the games in Blitz, you need a team around you. It's very rare, unless you're one of the very top players, to carry a team fully, okay? It's, it's, it's not that easy, not now, because you, you need the other tanks in there, especially when you're playing a light tank or a TD. You need those heavies to absorb the shots. You need those big guns to knock out the big damage to whittle the enemy down. Don't get frustrated or flustered by having a bad team. If you've got, you know, if you're getting repeatedly bad teams, drop down a tier, or better still, come out the game, go make yourself a cup of tea or something, and go or read a book. Go back later when you've calmed down, because if you get into this trap of keep losing, you get tighter on your device, be it a PC, an iPad, or whatever. You try harder, and inevitably, you actually don't play better. You play worse. So. Two things that this game depends on. One, you, the player, and you knowing and wanting to improve. And two, the team around you, okay? Now you can improve your chances. Obviously, jump into a platoon. That always will improve your chances on playing better. But everything still boils down to you as the individual. If you're not prepared to put the effort in to get better, then you're not gonna get better. If you're not prepared to put the effort in to learn the maps and learn the tanks, you're not going to improve. You're going to be stuck in a rut, okay? And, and the other thing, resist the temptation to rush through these tiers. Getting to the big tanks isn't necessarily going to make you happy because when you get to those bigger tiers, you know, tier 8, tier 9, tier 10, you're generally going to come across some of the better players in the game and they are going to smack you every day of the week and twice on Sunday. And that is not fun, okay? You are not going to enjoy it. Simple. I, I don't know anybody who enjoy if look, if I've if I if I've got twenty thousand battles in a forty percent win rate, I'm losing six out of every ten battles. That is not fun. That is frustrating and it's demoralizing. And I, I don't believe anybody enjoys doing that. And I believe even those forty percent win rate players after twenty or thousand battles are destined and determined to improve. They're just stuck in a rut and they don't know how to. Now, if that's you, stop rushing the tiers. Drop down, learn the tanks. That's what the tier system is for. Let's have a look and see. I mean, you've got there the RU251 on the screen. And when I jump into Blitz Stars, you start to see exactly what the problem is. The RU has got a 48.10% win rate. It's by far the worst tier 8 light tank. Now, it's the second most played tier, tier tier 8 light tank. And that really makes you scratch your head. Look at the T49. The T49, I personally think, is a harder tank to play. Because it's got a big dirt gun, it's got a long reload, and it's got equally pants armour. So why is it that this tank is being played so often, yet it's got such a low win rate? It is not just the win rate. Look at its damage per battle. 990 is the average damage that players are knocking out per battle. This thing has like insane DPM, realistically. This little RU has some of the best DPM you'll get in tier eight for a light tank, if not the best. I mean, the, the, the FV301 is, I think, slightly better. But it's certainly got better DPM than the T49. I mean, the T49 is a terrible tank. Yet, the player base play that tank more effectively than this one. Admittedly, there's like double the amount of people playing it. I mean, that is by far the most played tier 8. The thing about the uh, Spar Panzer RU251, when we look at this raw data, you can see there, 769 battles. 48% win rate, very bad uh, damage per battle, 26% survival rate. Admittedly, that's better than the FV, and admittedly, it's better than the little German Bulldog, but it's still pretty bad. And then you look at the hit rate, that, that's, you know, the accuracy of the tank, 80%. That means it's less accurate 
than the AMX Defender or the LT432. Why? It's even less accurate than the, uh, the T54 Lightweight and the AMX 1390. And the irony is, this little RU has got one of the best guns in Tier 8. Let's jump into the parameters and the stats of this tank. You can see here, hit points, 1,300. Not too shabby for a light tank. And then you start to see where the problem is. Armour, turret, front, sides and rear, 20 millimetres. I mean, that is just paper thin. Hull, front, 25. Side, 20. Rear, 8. I mean, this thing is an HE magnet. I mean, everything is going to absolutely pen and batter this little tank from here to eternity. And that's where the problems of this tank lie. Because the player base, especially the newer players or the least experienced players, are rolling out in this tank on their way up to get that Leo one. And they are miss playing it because the armor is so bad you stick this tank in the wrong place and it's just going to be a terrible terrible day for you so what are the strengths of this tank wow it's got a pretty decent view range admittedly i'm running it with better we'll get to the equipment in a moment but with the equipment i've loaded it increases quite a lot of stuff so it's got good view range almost 300 meters camo brilliant Stationary and moving, 55. I mean, that's beautiful, 55%. I mean, that's absolutely insane for a light tank. When it fires, it's 13%. DPM, 2,538. I mean, that is mad. Thing is, and I've said this before in other videos, when it comes to DPM, you've got to, remain, you've got to remind yourself, this is not what the tank will do. It's what the tank can do. So this assumes that every 5.32 seconds you press fire without hesitation, your shell lands on its target and does maximum damage. Okay, every 5.32 seconds. Now, that's what the tank is capable of doing. It's not what it will do. You know, and this is, this is the misnomer that everybody has. Everybody thinks that, oh, it's got really great DPM and blah, blah, blah. Great if you're like a heavy tank and you're going to be brawling. Not so good if you're a little light tank because you're not going to be out DPMing somebody in a brawl because you shouldn't be in a brawl. Because if I stick this thing against a, I don't know, a Borsig in a brawl, the Borsig's just going to stick one HE into me and it's good night Vienna. So be careful with this terminology DPM. It's not what the tank will do. It's what it's capable of doing. Reload time is 5.32 seconds. That is really nice. Penetration on its AP, 189. That's actually really good. Heat, 275. Again, really good. HE, mad, 112. I mean, that is stonking for a little light tank. 112 millimeters of penetration on its HE. Going down, well, we've got the damage. We've got on the AP, 225. On the heat, 190. On the high explosive, 270. These are not shabby figures. Aim time, less than three seconds. I mean, that is beautiful. Dispersion, 0 0.330. That's not bad either. It has some gun depression, 10 degrees. It's got some gun elevation, 18 degrees. And it's got some pretty decent speed. Top speed going forward, 80 kilometers an hour. I mean, that is crazy. Reverse, 24. Average speed is about 44. And its terrain crossing ability is really, really nice. So why, oh why, is everybody struggling in this tank? Uh, it, it, it just doesn't seem right. It seems that the tank is actually pretty, pretty nice. And believe me, it's a beautiful little tank, yet, it's got the worst win rate for all the lights in tier 8. So there's a problem somewhere. And that problem is here, in its armour. Its armour is, well, non-existent. This is it facing off against a Tiger 2. A tank it will face lots of times when it rolls out in a battle. And as you can see, it is paper thin. I mean, look at this. 35 millimetres, and that's with the slope. <laughs> Front, 36 millimetres. It came with the slope. 
everything is going to pen you. Okay, so this is where this is the biggest weak point of this tank, and this is where the player base is becoming slightly unstuck because they are thinking that oh, you know, it's got gun depression. Stick the gun depression in, stick it on a ridge. Doesn't make an ounce of difference. This thing is just a paper bag. In fact, it's a wet paper bag with a gun stuck on it. So you've got to play the tank to its weaknesses. And the weakness of this tank is zero armor. It really has no armor. It's got a great gun. It's got great, it's got great crew. I mean, three second reload time is brilliant. It's got pretty decent down for damage. And it's got great mobility. The only thing it doesn't have is armor. And therein lies your problem. Because I see majority of the players rolling out in this thing and getting smacked instantly. They just YOLO out and go boom, boom, boom. And they're back in the garage within like 30 seconds of the game. So how are you going to play this tank more effectively? I'm going to now show you the equipment loadout that I use. Um, I'm not saying that this is ideal. I'm not saying this is the best equipment you should do. I'm not saying that what I'm telling you absolutely is the gospel. It's up to you what equipment you use. This equipment loadout that I'm using works for me. It may not work for you, but we'll have a look at that. So let's jump into the equipment. This is the equipment loadout I've got currently on my RU251. Now, I'm running calibrated shells. Why? I don't need the gun rammer. I've already got a pretty decent reload time, so I don't need that rammer. The rammer will drop my reload time from just over five seconds to just under five seconds. It's, it's, it's not worth it for me. It's, it's 0.37 seconds off. Calibrated shells, on the other hand, because I will come across tier nines on occasion, and I want that extra oomph to get through those tier nines. Again, personal preference. You may not want that extra oomph. You may want that extra DPM. But the thing is, if you know the way you play this tank, you shouldn't be brawling. You should be sort of sniping and doing things like that and farming from the back. So I don't need a gun rammer to farm. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the current reload. I'm then using the defense system. Why? Because I want, you know, this thing is paper thin. I don't want my modules being wrecked. I could go for the improved modules, but I'm fast enough to avoid rams. That's why I'm using the defense system. No point me using a camo net. I'm using the improved optics. I'm a light tank. I need that view range. That is why that is in. Camo net, what is it going to do for me? I've already got, you know, sufficient camo concealment as it is. Sticking on a camo net is just daft. I'm, I'm not hoping to stay stationary that long. When moving, it doesn't really help me that much. And when firing, it only gives me an extra two. Why would I load a camo net when I want that improved view range? I am a light tank. I need to spot. I then have the enhanced gun laying device. I could use the supercharge, but I think there's enough velocity in the ammunition already for me not to bother with the supercharge. I want the aim time slightly better. I'm then using the improved assembly. Why over hit points? Look, 4% of nothing is nothing. What is the point of me loading up enhanced armor on a, on a, on a tank that's primarily got only 20 millimeters? It's gonna give me nothing. It adds me no advantage. I'm still gonna get blasted by absolutely everything. And everybody's HE is still gonna blast me to kingdom come. There is no point me sticking on enhanced armor. Always better to have the improved assembly. Okay, it's only 78 hit points, but that's better than nothing. I then use the engine accelerator. Why? Well, I don't really need the improved control. The, the control I've already got is good enough. Whereas the engine accelerator, okay, not giving me much more speed-wise, it's only one, but it's giving me a better haul turn, it's giving me more engine power, it gives me better power to weight ratio, allows me to cross the terrain slightly better. Moving down, I'm using a vertical stab. Why? Why do I need a refined gun? This gun is insanely accurate already. It is like a laser beam. Vertical stab is going to help me reduce that aim time. That is critical in this tank. I'm then sticking on just a toolbox and I end consumables. Talking about consumables, no point me loading a speed boost, to be fair. It's already fast enough. So I'm sticking it with two repair kits because you can get tracked quite a lot and the adrenaline. Pretty standard loadout. Provisions. 
I'm using chocolate because if you have a look, it, it, it increases everything for me. Better view range, better DPM, better reload time. It just increases my crew skills. And then using the, the multiple protective kit gives me protection to everything, which is a good thing in this tank. You're going to get smacked. And I'm then using the improved fuel. Gives me better speed and better mobility. That's just my personal preference. I'm not saying you've got to do this. These are my preferences. As for my ammunition, well, as you can see, majority of my shells are AP. I've got 11 heat premium ammunition in there in case I come across those tricky little tier nines. And I've only got five HE. And you may be thinking, why have you only got five HE? This thing's got insane HE penetration. Yes, it has. But, you know, you've got to get around the back of the tanks if they're heavies or mediums or, or whatever. Uh, or you're going to be smacking, you know, every now and then TDs like a Borsig or Scorpion G, blah, blah, blah. You don't need much HE. Admittedly, I could drop my AP, maybe, and increase my HE. But why would I do that? I'm getting equally good penetration without, you know, I'm getting equally good damage and penetration on the AP without sacrificing the fact that if I shoot this thing towards a Borsig or, say, a Scorpion G, I'm going to hit the damn barrel and then just do splash damage. So that's why I've only got five in there. So how do you play this tank? What's the best way to play this tank? Well, like I say in most of my videos, you play to the tank's weaknesses. The weakness of this tank is its armor. That is important. It has no armor. So you need to protect your hit points as much as possible. So let's jump into a couple of games and let's have a look at how we can play the RU251 a little bit more effectively. Here we are on Himmelsdorf. Oh, it's a notoriously flat map, and it's not a friendly map to anything other than a heavy, really. This map doesn't have many safe areas. Not, um, you know, not a hall down and stuff, but it's got a lot of safe places that you can hide behind. So I'm going to push down here. I know that there's nothing on their flank. I get totally, totally sideswiped here and caught off guard by a camping heavy tank autoloader. Why is that? Don't know. He gets too into me. I've lost half my hit points. I've now got to reevaluate my role in this game. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay. Your team may be shouting at you. I mean, I see it constantly. TD sat at the back saying, Oh, you spot. Light tank spot. Admittedly, you know, that doesn't mean like I saw yesterday with an SP-1C sitting on top of the hill just outside the spawn. That ain't effective. What you need to do as a light tank is get in there, get those early spots, turn around and run away to a position of relative safety so you can then farm. Because by the time you've spotted, your team should be getting themselves into positions by looking at the minimap to manoeuvre themselves to the battle ready state. Now we can see here on the mini map that four of their tanks are lit up. They, they haven't lost any tanks yet. You can see my two mate is moving round to the back of them and I'm trying to evaluate, well, where am I gonna go? I don't wanna rush into that Shimera. He's gonna wreck me with an HE. So I'm biding my time and don't be afraid to do this, guys. Nobody, nobody should be rushing in to get involved. Evaluate your situation. Take your time to come up with and formulate your own battle plan based on what you're seeing on the minimap. Now, I can see here that they're facing off a little bit. I've got two heavies slightly further back, but I think that their tanks are now preoccupied. So I can go in, I can smack the Salma up the backside, load the HE, and hopefully we can finish him off with a good roll here. And we do. And this is what I'm explaining to you. You know, we got ourselves into trouble in the early part of that game with the AMX camping at the back. Totally unexpected. We have to turn things around, retreat a little bit, and then reformulate a game plan. That's all you should be looking to do. Anybody shouting at you to do X and Y, ignore them, guys. You don't need to, 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 to bow to somebody else's wishes. Okay, you play your game and you play the, they, the you play your role as best you can. We get a successful battle there. We only do 1300, we take one kill, we get quite a bit of spotting damage, and we get a third class. That's not bad. 
the thing is, I may not be setting the world on fire. I may not be getting 10k damage. I may not be getting a golden M. We won the game. And therein lies the thing. So yesterday when I played, I played five games in the RU. Remember, this tank has got a 48% win rate. I played five games. We had an 85% win rate. That, that is a big thing. So this is what you've got to look for. Okay, you've got to look for turning the games around and winning those games. Because if you're not winning the games, your win rate is going down, not up. Doesn't matter if you've got you know the best. What's the point of having average damage of three thousand if you've got a win rate of forty percent? Surely you would be better off having an average damage of one thousand and a win rate of seventy percent. I certainly think I would like that. I would rather have you know reasonable average damage and a good win rate rather than have stonking average damage and a, a bad win rate because that shows that I'm improving yeah that, that's just my philosophy but it's up to you how you want to play your game and what the goals of the game are for you rolling out onto Castilla this is a map that's sort of perfect for this tank it's got so many bumps and undulations. Okay, it's been flattened out a little bit, but it's still a beautiful little map. And this area is the prime, prime area for a tank like the RU. Be mindful of what's coming out on that right hand, on that side though, on the right, because you will get tanks up there. And if you get spotted in this position, they will put shots across. We can look at the pattern here. He's pushing up onto my two mate. I can get a shot into him. I know he's a good player. He's from the clan Pink. However, I think he, he, he gets a bit upset with his team and he sort of eventually says there's no point, of, you know, you're going to just steamroll us. So we put some good shots, we're already up to 450, we've only fired two shots, we've done a bit of spotting. And we can generally see the lair of the land. We've got a dominant position here. Even though they brought up their 59 pattern, he is very isolated. Nobody came with him and don't forget they have got a light tank. So we're actually not doing too badly here. The enemy team, well, they've made a lot of errors and a lot of mistakes. Their, 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 their strategy is not the best. Poor old Satank a lot here. Well, there's not much you can do about it. And uh, he's out for the count. Again, this is why you need not so many HE. That's just a bad shot. I, I tried to track him, hoping that I was going to get some more out of him, but it just didn't work. So again, I've got to re-evaluate my positioning here. They are going into the town. Why? don't know is this a prime yeah we can get some great shots into them so this is a relatively novice team yeah you're gonna get this guys you're gonna get good enemies and bad enemies and that shouldn't alter your game philosophy your overall game philosophy should be protect your hit points protect your tank and wait for the opportune moment and when the opportune moment presents itself push now look at this for pinpoint accuracy on this Scorpion G. Look at this. Bang. Like that is an insanely accurate gun. Why is this the worst tank in tier 8 as a lag? Why has this got the lowest damage per battle? It beggars belief. And it's all because it's not the tank. I keep saying this. It's the player base. And you've got to get out of this mentality that you're going to rush, rush, rush. I've got mobility, therefore I need to rush. No! Mobility gets you into trouble, but it also gets you out of trouble. This thing has an insanely accurate gun with some fantastic penetration, decent damage and good velocity. That should be giving you pointers. Stay out the bloody back! Get in there with your mobility, get the spots, get out of there, get yourself to a position of safety and farm. When the moment then comes, push. Now the moment has come to push. Doesn't matter if I die now, because it's two against five. This game is in the bag. Now it's five against one. Doesn't matter anymore. I can afford to now waste some of my hit points on pushing onto that chieftain. Not a big deal. The game is won, and this is what you've got to do. There's no point rushing in in the first 30 seconds of the game. You need to rush in at the dying embers of the game, okay? Especially in a tank like the RU. So resist that temptation of rushing in straight off the bat because you're going to get wrecked and you're going to be in the garage and you're going to be sat there thinking that this tank is absolutely terrible. It's one of the worst tanks ever and it's actually not. 
But yeah, Blitzstar says it is because we as a player base are playing it so badly. We are just terribly, terribly badly at playing this, at, at this tank. And it's a crying shame because it's actually one of the better lights, if not the better light, because of that gun. That gun is insane. Anyway, we finish off the little AMX there. Again, I'm not setting any world records here. Just over 2,000 damage. We take a kill. But I'm happy again with that game, okay? I only get a third class, but I don't care. This is not about me collecting masteries. This is about me doing well in the tank and winning battles. And that is my aim. Everything else, as I said, is a bonus that comes later. That's the thing, guys. I mean, as I said, in nine, time, in, in, in nine times out of ten, the tank is not rubbish. It's just that we're not playing it correctly. This tank, I think, is a beautiful tier 8 light. It's just totally misunderstood. And it's misunderstood for various reasons, as I explained in the video. One of the problems that we as newer players, well, we as the player base, and especially newer players, is they want to rush through those tiers. They want to rush into the battle. You don't want to do that. The most important thing on your tank is its hit points. You need to cherish them and protect them at all costs. There's no point you wasting all your hit points early doors because you just then become effective to nobody and you're not going to have fun. So remember these little things. Play the tank to its weaknesses. Okay, this tank has no armor, so don't stick it on the front line. This tank has great mobility. Once you've played it to its weaknesses, play it to its strengths. This tank has great mobility. It will get you around the battlefield and it will get you out of trouble. This tank has an insanely accurate gun with really good DPM and really good accuracy. Use it. Snipe. It's got a good view range and it's got fantastic camo. Use these things. When this thing has got a 55% camo rating whilst moving, that should ring alarm bells. Why? Because you shoot, you relocate, and people can't see you. Use these things. Get used to understanding the tanks. And more importantly, get used to knowing the maps and the positions on the map. Because that is vitally important, I'm telling you. Anyway, I've been Fujit, and that has been the RU251. A beautiful, beautiful tier 8 tank that a lot of people are really struggling with. And I don't understand why, because it is truly a fantastic tank. I love it. I think in the right hands, this thing is an absolute beast. And whilst Blitzstars has got it down as the worst of all the tier eight lights, I think that is doing it an injustice. And it's doing it an injustice because we as the player base are doing this tank an injustice. Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujit. That has been the RU251. By all means, I want to know your thoughts on this. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on the RU251. Do you like it? Do you loathe it? Do you think that it's being played correctly or incorrectly? It's important. The comments are there for you. Don't just listen to what I've got to say in these videos and say, oh yeah, I've got to do exactly what he says. Tell me where it's wrong. Tell me what I'm saying. Is it right? Is it wrong? Does it help? Does it not help? That's the idea, guys. It's a two-way thing. I do videos, you tell me your comments and views. Anyway, until the next time, remember this, guys. It's just a game. So stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about, having fun and being 